There is a custom in Jewish tradition that when we have a loss, we perform a ritual called Kriya. And Kriya means tearing. And we're going to tear a ribbon. And in Jewish tradition, we tear. It's the last thing we do before we, we begin the service. And there's lots of reasons. I'm going to give you three to think about. There are many others. One is we tear because we are physical beings. And we have a need to do something physical. It changes nothing. It's not cathartic. But it feels right. Secondly, is it's a symbol of the tear in the fabric of our lives. And thirdly, is it's a change in your status. Up until this moment, your job has been taking care of details. Once you tear, your job is to let others take care of you. So the three of you as the most close mourner, parent, child, sibling, spouse, are going to perform this ritual. I'm going to ask you to repeat after me, please. Adonai Natan. Adonai Lakach. Yehi. Shem. Adonai. Nevorach. God has given. God has taken away. Blessed be the name of God. Baruch Ata Adonai. Dayan, Ha'emet. We praise you, Adonai, truthful judge. Let's all say, Amen. I'm going to ask you to tear the ribbon just from the bottom. It's pretty Traditionally, you wear it for seven days, whatever you're comfortable with. And uh, we begin. I invite the tall bearers to come.
ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to come forward now. You're welcome to fill this area. If I haven't already done so, please turn off your cell phones for the service. And please recognize the family has already been seated. So we have a number of extra chairs. Please don't be bashful. Have a seat. The service will be about a half hour to 40 minutes long. Welcome to this funeral service for our beloved Scott Halpern. We begin with the chanting of the 16th Psalm. Shiriti Adonai Meneki I have set the eternal always before me. God is at my side. I shall not be moved. Therefore does my heart exult and my soul rejoice. My being is secure. For you, not, you will not abandon me to death, nor let your faithful ones see destruction. You show me the path of life. Your presence brings fullness of joy into me. It's your gift. Death has taken a beloved Scott Helper. And our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O oh God, and be with them. For Scott's love that united you in life and which death cannot sever. For his companionship that you shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory. For his joy of life, for his friendship, for his embrace of all, for his hard work, for his goofiness, for all of the gifts of his heart and his mind that brought joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance, we give thanks to God. And in this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scripture that brings us the ever new message of God's nearness that tells of our kinship with the creator in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Perhaps more than any, the words of the 23rd Psalm have brought so much comfort to so many over the ages. I'm going to ask Cantor Sachs if she will chant it in Hebrew, and then I'm going to read the English. And if you know it, join with me, or even bits and pieces, join with me. Cantor? Lord, 
God is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, and restores my soul. You lead me in right paths for the sake of your name. Even when I walk in, in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of God. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan, Adonai Lakach, Yishem Adonai Mevorach, God has given, God has taken away, blessed be the name of God. In ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief in the valley of shadows, death and sorrow are not strangers to us. And yet the centuries have taught us that the Keter Shem Tov, the crown of a good name, endures beyond the grave, and that there is strength in faith. And so with Job, we say, Adonai Natan, God, you have given, you gave us, God, help me. You will not be forgotten. And for all that was good and all that was enduring in his life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach. God, you have taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust before which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love. As we now say, Yishem Adonai Mevorach Adolam, blessed be the name of God, 
now and forever. And I'm going to ask that we take a few moments now of silent prayer as we remember Scott, as we remember his joy of life, his friendship, the way he brought people together and loved everyone he knew as we pray in silence. Dear Barbara, dear Tracy, dear Marsha, Ryan, and Brian Joe, dear Ron and Angela, Ken, dear Evan, MC, Dylan and Morgan, dear Gloria, dear family and friends all. We're not supposed to be here right now. We should be cheering on the Broncos or the Nuggets or ogling classic cars, or reminiscing about the glory days of GW's class of 1987. We should be paging through the Jewish news and solving the weekly who's who's puzzle. We should be plotting strategy for the family fantasy football league or exploring the other graves in the cemetery not standing here in disbelief, grieving and crying. So we mourn the loss of a pure soul, Scott Halpern. Scott was a remarkable man, a gentle giant, as so many have described him. He was loving and caring and loyal and funny and spiritual and an incredibly hard worker who not only loved his job, but the people with whom he worked on a daily basis. Scott was a connector. Look around. Look how many different communities are here right now, all connected through this remarkable human being who brought people together through his passion for life and his ability to find joy in everything he did and everyone with whom he came in contact. He died too soon. 
and the world is a bit darker and sadder as a result. Scott was born on September 24th, 1968, Rose Hospital to Ben and Barbara Helper. And Scott and his sister Tracy were amazed during a remarkable time, their Virginia Vale neighborhood was filled with family and friends. You did everything together. You rode bikes, you stayed out all day. Scott loved to swim at the Virginia Vale Swim Club, a passion for swimming that he retained throughout most of his life. But not only did he join a swim team, but he worked at the club cleaning pools and serving as a lifeguard. And those experiences taught him the importance of hard work, and dedication, themes that remained with him throughout his life. He and Tracy grew up alongside their cousins, Ron, Ken, and Evan, in a very close-knit circle of friends. Scott never lost contact with anyone. His childhood best friends, Dale and Kent Horiuchi, remained by his side as you carried him to his final resting place. He remained in contact with his childhood friends from high school and loved hanging out with them at bars, even though he rarely drank. At the class of 1987 GW high school reunions and get togethers, he was always the center of attention, dancing like nobody was watching. He was a terrible dancer. But what he lacked in grace, he more than made up in enthusiasm and passion and love. He worked hard. He was always the first one in the office, the first to lend a hand, and the first to give kudos to others. He worked for several companies, but his last position at the Ackerman Law Firm brought him great joy. He loved everyone with whom he worked. He was especially fond of his boss, Michelle. He loved to bowl. He loved the Broncos and the Nuggets, passions that he shared with his nephews, Ryan and Brian Joe who he absolutely adored and who adored him. He loved dogs, especially his collies. And it was not surprising that Scott loved to eat. He was a big man. And when you first met him, he looked quite intimidating. And so you got to know him and realized that he had a heart of gold. Now, the Husney and the Halpern families were always very close. They celebrated holidays and simchas together and supported each other during the difficult times. And when his parents got divorced, Scott took it very hard. And when Ben died suddenly in 2003 on Yom Kippur, it shook him and Tracy to their very core. And the love and support of family and friends helped them cope with tragedy. And that closeness of childhood remained to this very day. He had a passion for classic cars that stemmed from the vintage Camaro that his father Ben and he painstakingly restored and that was given to him as soon as he got his driver's license. He loved going to car shows and reading the classic motorsports magazine subscription that Evan used to give him every year for Hanukkah. He loved to travel especially with his sister. Every year they would attend a Broncos away game in a different city. And it was always fun to be around them because it was so joyful all the time. And for his 40th birthday, all his cousins took him to Las Vegas. And I won't say anything more about that. Trip. <laughs> Scott was a very spiritual man. He loved being Jewish. He loved attending services at all the different congregations around town. And after Ben's death, Tracy, you and your brother would make it a point to spend Yom Kippur together as a tribute to your dad's memory. He loved genealogy. Family and family history were incredibly important to him. Whenever Tracy would come to visit from Chicago, Scott would make it a point to take time off from work so that he could be with her as much as possible. He loved cemeteries, but not from a morbid perspective. You know, in Hebrew, the word for cemetery is Beit Chaim, one of the names. And the word Beit Chaim means a house of the living, not a house of the dead. Because he would come here and he would recreate and celebrate the lives of the names of the people he saw 
He held on to their memories and kept their memories alive. Cemeteries told the stories of generations and families that were central to his understanding of what was most important in the world. And Ron, when you recently bought him a book about the cemeteries of Colorado, the cousin was over the moon. And no one is more important to Scott than his beloved Barbara, his mother. They were truly best friends. They were always together. Between the two of them, they were a virtual encyclopedia of knowledge and trivia about the Jewish community of Denver. Barb, today you grieve the loss of a precious child. And we hold you at this painful time. As I said before, Scott was a connector. He made you feel special when you were in his presence. Rabbi Larry Kushner wrote the following. There must have been a time when you entered a room and met someone, and after a while you understood that unknown to either of you, there was a reason you had met. You had changed the other, or he had changed you by some word or deed, or just by your presence, the errand had been completed. And then perhaps you were a little bewildered or humbled and grateful, and it was over. He writes, each life, is the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. For some, there are more pieces. For others, the puzzle is more difficult to assemble. Some seem to be born with a nearly completed puzzle, and so it goes, souls going this way and that, trying to assemble the myriad parts, but know this. No one has within themselves all the pieces to their puzzle. Like before the days when they used to seal jigsaw puzzles in cellophane, ensuring that all the pieces were there. Everyone carries with them at least one and probably many pieces to someone else's puzzle. And sometimes they know it and sometimes they don't. And when you present your piece, which is worthless to you, to another, whether you know it or not, whether they know it or not, you are a messenger from the Most High. That was Scott. He brought people together. He helped them find pieces of their lives they didn't even know was missing. And even in our grief, we give thanks for a life of giving and caring and celebrating love. Zichrono Levracha, may Scott Halpern's memory be for an eternal blessing. May he rest in peace and let us all say, we take just a few more moments now of silent prayer. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim melech haolam asher yatsar etchem betzalmo vezan bechilchel etchem betuvo. Vehimit etchem badin vanata betoch etchem chayu olam baruch atah Adonai dayan ha'emet. We praise you Adonai our God, ruler of the universe, who forms us in the divine image, who nourishes and sustains us in your goodness, who causes all of us to die and who implants immortal life within us. We praise you, O God, judge of truth. Atah gibor le'olam Adonai rab le'hoshia. Eternal is your might, O God, all life is your gift. Great is your power to save. With love you sustain the living, and with great compassion you give life to all. You send help to the falling and healing with the sick. You bring freedom to the captive and keep faith with those who sleep in the dust. We praise you, O God, who implants eternal life within us.
May Scott Halpern return to his eternal home in peace. My friends, before we chant the El Malei Rachamim, we perform the mitzvah of helping a loved one find his final resting place. And so I'm going to ask those who wish to place earth in the grave, we need to cover the coffin before we can say El Malei by the bylaws of the cemetery. So I'm going to ask if anyone would like to come and place earth in the grave. This is not an easy thing to do, but it is a very important mitzvah, and I invite you now to come forward.
We're going to take a pause now, and after the conclusion of our service, anyone else who wishes to place earth in the grave can do so. But right now, I'm going to ask us to rise as we are able for the El Male Rachamim prayer for the deceased. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Scott Halpern, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, find refuge in the shadow of your wings, and that his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace and let us say, and may those who mourn the loss of Scott Halpern find comfort in the hope that though the dust returns to the earth as it was, the spirit returns to God who gave it. Death is not the end. Those we love have passed through the gateway of the grave into the peace of life eternal, and we know that all of us must tread the same path, though we not know, though we know not when that hour may come. And so let us live. That the coming of that hour shall find us unafraid, and my our deeds do honor to the memory of our beloved Scott, whom you have taken to yourself. And so trusting in your wisdom and loving kindness, we praise your name now. With the words of the mourners, Kaddish. Yit Gadal, the Yit Kadash in Meraba, the Alma, the Vrahir Ute, the Amlich Malhute, the Haye Hon of your Mehon, the Haye the Hoy Bait Israel, Vagalau, his man Kari, the Imru Amen, the Hay Shmerabam Barach, the Alam, the Lame Almaya. Barach, the Yishtabach, the Yit Paar, the Yit Roman, the Yit Nase, the Yit Hadar, the Yit Ale, the Yit Halal Shmeg Kutcha, Rifu, the Ela Min Kogirhata, the Shirata, Rushbehata, the Nehemata, the Amir and the Alma, the Roman, the Shlamaraban Shmaya, the Hailing, Alin, the Alcohol Israel, the Roman. Shalom in the Mavia as a shalom. We are called Israel. 
We pray that God, who makes peace in places far beyond our knowing, might bring comfort to all the bereaved here among us. And let us say amen. Go your way, for God has called you. Go your way, and may God be with you. May our righteousness go before you, and the glory of God receive you. And I ask now that all who are gathered here these words after me speaking them to the mourners may god console you may god console you with all who mourn with all who mourn in zion and jerusalem in zion jerusalem now let us go forth in peace like this is complete our service